Hello, this is Dr. Patrick Hu, CEO of Moffitt Cancer Center. We're here from Orlando, Florida at the annual AACR meeting here with Dr. Armin Bird. So thank you, Dr. Bird, for uh, coming to be with us today. Thank you for having me. Dr. Bird is an expert in analyzing the gut microbiome, which is the bacteria in the gut and how it influences cancer. So yes. uh, also, you're a Next Gen Star awardee from AACR, so congratulations on that. Thank you so much, thank you so much. <laughs> so tell us about your presentation today. Sure, sure. So I am establishing a large microbiome study where we will collect fit tests, which are used for colorectal cancer screening. So this study will be really unique because we are capturing very diverse participants who are going into federally qualified health centers and free clinics. And these clinics really serve anyone regardless of their ability to afford care and rural area residents and many individuals from diverse backgrounds. Um, so I will be collecting microbiome samples among individuals in these clinics and we will also collect detailed information on diet and lifestyle and other social exposures like stress and sleep to be able to better understand how these exposures influence the gut microbiome and in turn influence one's risk for developing cancer. So um, we've heard a lot about younger people getting colon cancer. Yes. So uh, do you think the microbiome has a role in that? I do. So the microbiome is actually strongly modified by many different exposures that are actually changing over or across generations, such as diet, like processed foods or added sugars um, or antibiotic use, for example. So since the microbiome is influenced by all those exposures, I do think that there is a strong potential that the gut microbiome may be involved in earlier onset cancers. You know, I uh, read something recently that these colon cancers in young patients are more commonly on the left side, mm -hmm. which is interesting, isn't it? It is, it is, yes, it's very interesting. And, you know, there is also the potential that some of these dietary exposures affect certain sides of the colon more than others. So that kind of tracks along with um, the potential for diet to have um, different effects by colon site for younger individuals. Mm -hmm. So patients coming to get screened uh, with the FIT test, which uh, looks mm -hmm. at blood in the stool, right? Yes. Um, and yes. then um, you're going to get history, you're going to get their diet, and then you're going to look at what kinds of bacteria are in their gut and try to put it all together. Are you going to follow them over time? Yes, yes. So that's the ultimate goal and the really unique thing about this study most of the existing studies today are measuring the microbiome and cancer at just one point in time. So we don't really know whether the microbiome is driving cancer or cancer is driving the microbiome. So I'm hoping to create a very unique resource where we can follow healthy individuals over many, many years to see whether or not they develop cancer or other, other um, diseases as well. So how often are you going to be uh, talking to these participants about their diet? Yes, yes, so we have yearly questionnaires, so at least annually we will provide them a pretty long questionnaire that um, assesses their diet over the past year. And how many samples do you think you're going to have in this collection? Well, yes, well, I'm an epidemiologist, and as epidemiologists, we love large sample sizes. So there are thousands of individuals who are screened via the FIT every year, so I'm hoping that we can have a really large study population of I'm um, hopefully over 5,000 individuals. Over 5,000, and you're going to run mi microbiome tests on all of them? Yes, 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 we are. And um, I'm hoping that we can generate some really detailed um, microbiome data that will be really powerful um, in terms of what it can tell us about cancer risk. And uh, the importance of this uh, study compared to other collections is that you'll have people of very diverse backgrounds with the, in this collection, right? Yes, yes. Um, so we'll have many individuals who are from rural areas, also individuals who may not be able to afford medical care. Um, often these individuals, you can't go straight into a colonoscopy, so they start with the FIT test. Um, so we will have a broad range of, of individuals who aren't typically captured in biomedical um, studies. So do you think the results of this will help inform uh, patients what they should eat because it is one of the most common questions I get from my patients. Well, will it um, uh, inform what 
they should eat, how they should have lifestyles, what, uh, what, what uh, they should do for their stress levels. Do you think it's gonna do all that? Yes, yes, that is the ultimate goal. We want to understand what are the best diets that are targeted to the gut microbiome to improve its composition and in turn, not only reduce risk for cancer, but also improve overall health because by eating healthy, you know, we reduce our risk for many other chronic diseases as well. So I'm hoping that that will be the next step is to move forward and understand what is the best diet for us to eat to improve our overall health. <laughs> well, good luck with your research. Such an important question. Dr. Armin Bird, a next-gen star here at the AACR meeting in Orlando, Florida.